experts can't explain every archaeological artifact that they come across, and we shouldn't want them to. If they could, we wouldn't have any ancient mysteries left to solve, and that would be a very boring world to live in. We love a good ancient mystery, and we've got plenty of them for you to consider in this video. Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments. The Venus of Holafels, sometimes also known as the Venus of Schkelklingen, is so named because it was discovered in the Holafels cave in Germany in 2008. The cave was already well known to archaeologists in Germany long before this prehistoric depiction of the female form was discovered. The fact that the artifact is made of ivory has allowed scientists to test it and obtain a date, so we know that it's between 35 and 40,000 years old. That puts it close to the beginning of the Upper Paleolithic era. The reason it's so important is that it's the oldest known depiction of a human being created by human hands. Only the Lohenmensch figurine is older, but that has the head of a lion. The Venus of Hölafels doesn't appear to be intended to represent anything but a female human. Experts disagree on the significance of the figure. Some, including Nicholas Conard, the anthropologist who discovered it, believe the figure is purely representative of the sexual act and is almost pornographic. Others, including a study group from the Victoria University of Wellington, think it's a fertility symbol. We'll never know the truth, because there's no way of reading the intentions of someone who lived and died 40,000 years ago. Having mentioned the Lohenmensch figurine, it would be wrong to move on without addressing it. This is another ancient sculpture that was also found in a German cave. Often known by the simpler title of The Lion Man, the ivory sculpture was discovered inside the cave of Hollenstein Stadel in 1939. Carbon dating tests carried out on the layer it was found buried in indicate it to be around 45,000 years old, making it the oldest known artistic, representative sculpture in the world. Like the Venus of Hölefels, it's likely to have been created by the Aurignacian culture who lived in this part of Germany during the Upper Paleolithic era. Interpreting the meaning of the figurine is impossible, and even taking guesses at its symbolic meaning is a largely redundant exercise. Experts can't even agree on which gender the sculpture is supposed to be, or even whether it's supposed to have a gender at all. There are ancient cave paintings in France containing figures that look a little like the Lohenmensch figurine, but the resemblance isn't strong enough to say there's a definite link. Our next discovery is a little controversial, but there are some experts who believe we can call it a 100,000-year-old art studio. It's Blombos Cave on the south coast of South Africa, not far from Cape Town. Archaeologists who've been combing through the cave in recent years have identified evidence of prehistoric fishing along with sharp stone tools, but they've also found evidence that the cave's interior was used to mix and store red ochre. Experts have found plenty of pieces of ochre, but they've also found shells used as containers for the pigment and bowls used for grinding it. They even think that animal bones and charcoal found elsewhere in the cave might have been mixed with the ochre as part of the process. The ochre might have been used for painting and decoration, or it may even have been used as skin protection. If the theories of the experts are correct, this could have been the very beginning of the human conceptual ability to combine, source, and store substances that assisted their social practices. Even then, though, we won't know why red ochre was so important to so many of our most ancient ancestors all over the planet. Was the Gunstock War Club designed to look like the weapons used by European colonists against Native Americans? That's a question that archaeologists and historians in North America have been struggling with for decades, and they're unlikely to reach a conclusion anytime soon. What's not in doubt is that the Gunstock Club is an indigenous weapon, looks a lot like a rifle or a musket, and was used by the Northern Plains, Central, and Eastern Woodland tribes during the 18th and 19th centuries. The question is where the idea came from. Some evidence suggests they were already in use in Lakota by the end of the 17th century. One idea is that the tribespeople noted how the barrels of rifles and muskets could be used as clubs in battle once they were out of bullets, and so the design was copied. 
Another theory is that rather than using the weapons against colonists and their descendants, the Native Americans used them in battles against rival tribes, playing on the idea that they might have developed guns of their own and thus striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. Alternatively, perhaps the design is nothing but a coincidence. England has Stonehenge, and it's a wonderful ancient monument. But Spain has an answer to Stonehenge that's 4,000 years old, disappeared completely for more than 60 years, and is now underwater. It's called the Dolmen of Guadalperal, and it was revealed for the first time in six decades when an unusually hot summer in Europe led to a drought in Spain. That gave archaeologists a brief chance to fully explore this ancient site, made up of more than 100 granite standing stones. As with all ancient stone circles, its purpose is uncertain. It may have been used as a temple, but other suggestions include the idea that it might have been a burial site, or a meeting point for traders. Back when it was built, it would have stood on a riverbank. Unbelievably, it was sunk deliberately during the 20th century during the construction of the Valdecanas Reservoir. Spending decades underwater has cracked the stones, some of which have fallen over since they were last seen. There's a campaign in Spain to have the dolmen protected, but for now, the waters have returned to their normal level, and the site is underwater once more. Our cave-dwelling ancient ancestors didn't have a written language, but they did have other ways of making records of their travels and leaving messages behind. Most of the time, these records took the form of rock art, and this recently discovered Amazon rock art in Colombia is some of the most exciting that archaeologists have seen in many years. The paintings, created around 12,000 years ago, show ancient humans and enormous Ice Age animals living side by side. Experts have been able to identify mastodons in the paintings, along with giant sloths, camelids, and three-toe undulates. All of these creatures are now extinct, but they were obviously a common sight in the Columbia of the time and were recorded here in what are some of the oldest depictions of humans interacting with Ice Age creatures in the world. It's taken so long to find the rock art because it's in an extremely remote location. Archaeologists didn't even think anyone had ever lived here before the discovery was made. Now, they have to consider that this region might have been home to Western Amazonia's first ever residents. The ice patches of Lendbreen and Langfon in Norway are melting. Whether you believe that's down to human-induced climate change or not is up to you, but you can't deny that it's a problem. However, within that problem is an opportunity for archaeologists who have been able to recover artifacts that have been stuck in the ice for centuries. One of those artifacts is this 1,300-year-old arrow, which is still in near pristine condition. It's in such good condition that there's still a piece of feather fletching attached to it. The arrow was recovered from what's been described as the deepest core of the ice patch, indicating that it might have been fired by hunters who had tracked creatures into the center of the ice sheet, where they sheltered from insects that might have bitten them during the summer months. The projectile end of the arrow is delicately tapered, but the knock end of the arrow was wide enough for us to understand that the bow that fired the weapon was unusually thick. Additionally, traces of the tar that attached the fletching to the shaft are still present. Our knowledge of the craft skills of ancient Norse hunters has been considerably improved by this lone artifact. The crew of the Dutch fishing vessel Veringer 22 were performing their regular everyday duties in July 2022 when they caught something unexpected. The shrimp cutter ensnared a strange looking wooden statue, and experts still aren't sure what to make of it. The statue is of the kind that would have sat on the stern of Dutch vessels of the 17th century, but it's in such good condition that it's hard to believe it could be so old. To confuse matters further, the individual depicted by the statue appears to be wearing a Phrygian cap. Caps like this were worn in battle by Phrygian warriors, but those battles occurred more than a thousand years before the 17th century. The caps were important to the Phrygians because they were symbols of overcoming oppression. When Phrygians were enslaved by Romans, they were shaved bald. When they regained their freedom, 
They wore caps to hide their baldness initially out of shame, but over time, the caps came to represent freedom rather than shame. Experts are fairly sure the sculpture isn't a hoax, but will only know for sure after they've examined it. They can't do that yet, because it needs to undergo preservation work now that it's been removed from the water. Templo Mayor has already given us many fantastic ancient artifacts over the years. It was once the heart of a huge religious complex in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. What's left of it is now an archaeological site in Mexico City. Experts and archaeologists have been digging through the site for decades and will continue to do so for several decades more. But in June 2022, they confirmed the discovery of more than two and a half thousand wooden objects believed to have been left at the site as religious or ritual offerings. There's no sad pattern to the objects. They include figurines, headdresses, masks, jars, earrings, and scepters, all of which were probably deposited by priests during the 14th century as a means of consecrating the Templo Mayor to the gods that the Aztecs believed in. It's rare for wooden objects to survive for so many centuries in such good condition. But in the case of these artifacts, it seemed they were preserved by a combination of the high level of humidity in the region and the anaerobic conditions in the soil. Let's head to Israel to look at a supposedly cursed tomb. It's the first new tomb to be discovered in the necropolis of Beit Shearim in more than 60 years. The necropolis is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so archaeologists have to be careful about when and how they perform excavations here. But even if they follow the rules, they might have cause to regret disturbing this tomb. After all, it has a curse written on its entrance in blood-red lettering. Grave robbing was a common problem when this tomb was sealed more than 1,800 years ago. So it seems the family of the occupant, or perhaps even the occupant himself, wanted to deter anyone from attempting to steal its contents. The inscription reads, Yaakov Hager vows to curse anyone who would open this grave. So do not open it. I was 60 years old. Aside from deterring thieves, the family of the deceased may have wanted to ensure he wasn't removed from the tomb and replaced by someone else in the years that followed. This, too, was a common problem with the burials of the time. Thus far, archaeologists have heeded the warning and left the tomb undisturbed. For all our 21st century advances in medical technology, we still haven't come up with a functioning prosthetic eye device. All we can do if someone loses an eye is give them a ball to fill the socket with, which is exactly the same thing we did almost 5,000 years ago. Here's the proof. It's a prosthetic eye in the skull of a human skeleton that was found in the famous ancient burnt city of shar e sokta in Iran. The fake eyeball in its socket is made from a fairly disgusting sounding mixture of animal fat and tar, which was then painted gold. It's comfortably the oldest prosthetic eye ever discovered. It's unlikely that any member of this ancient civilization could have got a prosthetic eye if they wanted one. In this case, the recipient was a six-foot-tall woman who's thought to have been a high priestess. She was probably between 25 and 30 years old when she passed away. The ancient surgeon who installed the prosthetic had a surprisingly good grasp of the eye's anatomy, right down to using golden wires to simulate blood vessels. The ancient Egyptians also created prosthetic eyes, but this one is older than the oldest known Egyptian equivalent by at least 1,000 years. The most likely person to discover an ancient archaeological artifact is an archaeologist. The second most likely is a member of the public making a discovery by accident. The third most likely is a police officer, which is how this treasure trove of ancient goods was found in Jerusalem in March 2022. Israeli police raided the home of a suspected illegal dealer and recovered hundreds of ill-gotten artifacts, including a collection of extensively decorated bowls. To afford them their proper level of respect, we should call them magic bowls, although there are some historians who believe that the term swearing bowls would be more appropriate. The lengthy inscriptions on the bowls are intended to be magic spells, but in some cases, it would be more accurate to describe them as curses. 
The objects, all of which are written in ancient Hebrew script, were often deliberately broken after the spell was written and then buried beneath houses in the hope that they would ward off anything from pests and predators to diseases and demons. Some of them were even written in the hope that they'd counteract curses written by other people, which is the height of paranoia. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!